General Savary to see you, sire. Let me show him in. Sir. Mud. Everywhere, sire. Hmm. Mud follows the army like a fox. The troops in good spirits? Excellent. It gives them great heart to have you so close. I have an errand for you. The Emperor Alexander has arrived at Kutuzov's camp at Olmutz. The Austrian Emperor is there too. Yes, but since he's lost his capital, he's largely decoration. I want you to take this letter to the Emperor Alexander. Tell him. Having heard of his arrival at his army, I have sent you to salute him in my name. Plus an army of 73,000 French soldiers. And that's not the point. I like to pay these courtesies. I want him to see that I bear him no grudge, despite the fact that he takes part in a war against me that is no concern of his. Shall I make that point? I've made it in the letter. You may add to it. You can say. You've heard me complain quietly to my closest advisers how his presence here beside the Austrian Emperor wounds and bewilders me. Yes, sir. It is no less than the truth. Stay as long as you can without seeming to spy. If I return without having at least one Russian dinner, you may count to me as no more than a messenger. <laughs> we might make you one, then. You want to know how they view us, how the Russians get on with the Austrians, and whether Kutuzov is confident or wary? Uh, Kutuzov will always be wary. It's simply a matter of how far his view will prevail. I leave it to you. You know the sort of thing I like to know before a battle. Yes, sir. Good. Then ask my secretary to come in. Near Elgingen, November the 25th, 1805, 6.30 in the morning. Soldiers of the Grand Army, we have won one campaign. You have expelled the troops of the House of Austria from Bavaria. Half that army has been annihilated. You owe the success, your unbounded confidence in your emperor, your supporting fatigues and privations, and your unique bravery. Now the remnants of the Austrian army have been joined by a Russian army, which the gold of England has transported from the extremities of the universe. They will undergo the same fate, I promise you. In the second campaign, we shall be victorious with the least possible shedding of blood. My soldiers are my children. See that that is posted for all regiments by noon. Yes, sir. I shall sleep till 8.30. Wake me there. Olmutz, to see my cousin Boris. He's in the guards and they've just come up. 
Oh, you've got a cousin in the guards. You won't want to know about us, then. I'm not so sure he'll want to know me. He's got a letter for me. Oh, and some money from home. Oh, that's different. Make haste, then, old boy. We're celebrating tonight my promotion. He'll probably want to celebrate himself when he sees me. I'll be as quick as I can. You're such a popular chap, Wastoff. You're very difficult to live with. Oh, rubbish! I love... I'll try to save you some wine, but you know what the cavalry's like! See you get out of that. Hmm. We shall try to. Hmm. The of the Red Scroll, Boris Nicola. <laughs> Well, I'm, I wasn't expecting you today. We don't waste time in the czars. How are you? I'm fine. How you've changed. And you, my goodness, how smart you are, Berg. You here too? Hello, Count. What's all this petty song for? It's the Russian nurse we used to have. Mama tried to teach her French, but that's all she ever managed. Mm. I'm amazed. I only sent that note off to you yesterday. That's the army post for you, swift as a bird. Mind you. I did send it through Bolkonsky, an adjutant of Kutusov's. He's a friend of mine. Well, there you are. That's what comes of having powerful friends. <laughs> Must be, what, six months, nearly? God, you look like a soldier. And you, you look as cool and trim as if you'd just come in from a stroll. How was the march? Oh, wonderful. The Tsar came with us. So we had everything, dinners, balls, receptions, I can't tell you. Oh, you damned is not like us poor devils in the line. Well, what about some wine, hmm? Yes, if you really want some. Yeah, there you are. Berg, mm -hmm. be a good chap. Get a bottle up from the store. All right. No, 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 I insist. Let me, you're a guest. But exactly, I'd have bought some myself if I had the money. Now I've got it. Here, Berg. Take this, there's a good fellow, huh? Bring us two. Huh. My, they sent you a tidy sum, didn't they? Shall <laughs> be a minute. You've really changed, honestly. Well, so have you. What's in this damn thing? Don't catch cold, wear your vest at all times, and don't rush into things, I suppose. <laughs> oh, what a brute I am. I should have written home more often. They all send you their love, especially Natasha. Oh, that's all, uh, you know. Um... Found someone else of you? What? No, no. But you know, Nikki, when you're young. Yes, you... of course. Trouble is, back home, they think everything remains the same. <laughs> oh, what's this damn thing? Oh, no. What is it? Isn't that just a note of recommendation to General Bagration? What am I supposed to do with this? What? Use it. What nonsense. That's my mouth for you. God knows how much trouble she went to get it. Now, look, that can be useful to you. What for? To get some adjutant's job at Staff HQ? Well, you could do worse. Rubbish. I'm nobody's lackey. Still the same old idealist. You're still the same old diplomat. Yes. Well, I had a good training. Where? Living in your house. Oh, I didn't mean that unkindly, Nicky. Your family have been wonderful to me, to my mother. But, but when you're the poor relation, no matter how kind people yes, are... Yes, of course, of course. What a thing to be talking about. Well, tell me, how are you? Just as you see. Everything's turning out, really, quite well. Though I confess, I wouldn't mind being made an adjutant. But why? It's so dull. Oh. 
Oh, no. No, I think if you are going to go in for a military career, you should try to make it as brilliant as you can. <laughs> I hope it comes off. This will. I think it may. Prince Bolkonsky, he got a note to you. He's taken an interest in me, and he's um, trying to arrange a meeting with General Dolgorukov. Wonderful! You'll be an adjutant general yet, I can see it. Ah, he's there. Two bottles. Bravo, Bert. Where are the glasses? That's it. Well, 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 fancy the Tsar travelling with your lot. I must say it was very fortunate. We just had the best of everything. Listen, I hear you were wounded. Oh, it was nothing. Slight scratch, that's all. Did it leave a scar? Yes, but it doesn't show. Yeah. Well, cheers. To us and to the Tsar. To the Tsar. The Tsar. So you were really in battle? Well, of course. Someone does actually get into the front line, you know. <laughs> we were stationed on the edge of a wood against the French right. There was a good chance of them breaking through there. And the moment they did, we had to charge. And they did? Yes. Within a couple of hours, they made their move. I was beginning to think they'd never come. But then Isof said they would. He's a wonderful chap. Commands our squadron. Absolutely fearless. And what happened? We saw them coming towards us. Line upon line of blue-coated soldiers. At first, I didn't know what they were. Cattle or something. After all, you never really expect to see the enemy. Anyway, Denisov waited till they were strung out, easy to handle, gave the order, and off we went. But what actually did you do? We just bore down on them, cutting right and left with our sabres. Of course, we scattered the infantry. But what we didn't know was that there was a regiment of artillery behind them. My God, what did you do? We just charged the guns and broke up the whole emplacement. Oh, I can't tell you what it's like to be in a charge. It's Prince Volkonsky. Let me introduce my cousin, Count Rostov. How do you do? You were talking of the affair at Chern-Graben. Yes. You were there? I was. Please go on. One hears so few stories from people who actually took part. And that's because they're usually the most reticent, I suppose. When you've done the thing, you rarely feel the need to talk about it. Don't you agree? You were saying what it was like to be in a charge. I'd finished. Oh. I had the impression there was still a great deal to tell. I've heard so many stories from people who weren't there. I'd have been delighted to hear one from someone who was. I dare say. Our stories carry some weight. They're not the tales of little staff upstarts who get decorations for doing nothing. In which group you include me? I don't know you. And frankly, I don't wish to. I'm talking about staff officers in general. You seem bent on insulting me. However, since we're all likely tomorrow to be involved in a much more serious duel, I won't allow myself to be provoked. And if you have any sense, neither will you. I'm sorry, Drobetskoy, your friend seems to have taken a dislike to me. However, that's his affair. I just came in to say that I'll see you on Friday after the review. I managed to arrange an interview with Dolgorukov. Oh, thank you. There was no need to I be so... I can't stand that kind of pompous idiot! I'm sorry, boys. I'd better be going. Well, goodbye. Thank you for the letter and for the money. Oh, that's all right. I'm sorry. Goodbye, Boris. Goodbye, Count. How did the drives round to look? In good health. Pale and drawn, I thought. As so though he had not been sleeping well. Ah. Commander who doesn't sleep well doesn't fight well. well. He's not as used as Your Majesty to living in the field. Why should he be? It's my profession, not his. He says to be a figurehead. I must say he does it very well. You're more than generous to your enemies, sire. Don't regard him as my enemy. The English, they're my enemies. They won't rest till they've destroyed me. Or I've destroyed them. Trafalgar was a bitter blow. Uh, can't be everywhere. Bill Nerve was a fool. He had to prove himself against the British fleet because I'd criticised him for inaction off Cape Finisterre. But I never told him to take on Nelson. <laughs> he didn't know he was in command. But he should have done. 
It's no excuse for faulty intelligence. However, battle lost is a battle lost. We have one to win here, and win by a few brilliant strokes. What was your impression of the mood of the Russian camp? Well, we're very confident. They think you've advanced too far. Well, any fool can see that. What are they going to do? Attack? Or wait and see. What's in the air there? There's an enormous number of young Russians there. The Tsar brought them with him. They talk wildly about the ambition of France and how it is their duty to stop it. The atmosphere is charged with excitement. Mm, I see. The Tsar is sending Dolgorukov to see me. Oh, to repay the compliment you paid him by sending me. He will doubtless also talk peace terms, but really to keep his eyes and ears open. Well, we might fill those eyes and ears with the right impressions, or the wrong ones. Of course. The biggest problem is the Russians are encamped on the Pratsen Heights. If we must attack them, we must. But if we could just draw them down. How? Well, if they gained the impression, for instance, that we were weaker than they supposed, or that we were trying to avoid an engagement. Well, that could be arranged. What will you say to Dolgorukov? Hmm? Very little. I shall listen. Listen with a humility that he would hardly expect from the Emperor of France. These Austrian wines. Something arrived from Paris recently. I'll inquire, sir. Go and see Marshal Soult. He's very abstemious, but draws as big a ration as the rest of us. God knows what he does with it. <laughs> Your health, sir. Thank you, sir. Where did you get him? Down by the river, sir. Dragoons, eh? And what were you doing down by the river? The corporal, monsieur. Sent us to get food for the horses. Uh, our patrol, sir, about 30 of them. Yeah. Feeling us out, that's all. Turned tail and ran the moment they saw us. If you're a fine-looking horse, what are you going to do with it? Sell it. Please, monsieur, you, you will not hurt my horse. Oh, we shan't hurt him, my man. What do you think we are? But you've no more use for a horse. How much do you want for it? Two gold pieces, sir. I think that's fair. Damn, I haven't got enough. What about you, Ostoff? Do you want to buy him? Monsieur, what will happen to my horse? Oh, do be quiet, old boy. He'll be perfectly safe with us. Yes, I'll take him. Put him with the rest. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Funny how they don't look so fierce when you get up close to them. The French, I mean. He seemed more concerned about his horse. Yes. <laughs> I rather approve of that. Can't be much wrong with a chap who thinks more of his horse than he does of himself. Twink. Mm. You seem a bit down in the mouth, old friend. Anything wrong? No. You seem to be brooding over something. Oh, it's nothing. You know, I went over to see my cousin a couple of days ago. Yeah? I thought it was going to be a lot of fun, and it turned out to be awful. <laughs> Nearly always is with one's relations. He's changed. He's so damn spruce and ambitious. <laughs> Well, he's in the guards. I know. But then they started to ask me about the charge at Schoengraben. And well, I embroidered a bit and felt disgusted with myself afterwards. Oh, don't worry, old chap. We all do it. Really? You too, Danny Soft? All the time, dear boy. <laughs> I'm the biggest liar in the camp. Everyone knows. <laughs> What's that? What regiment is this? We're a squadron of the Pavlograd Hussars, sire. Was it the squadron who charged the French at Schoengraben? Yes, sire. Were there many casualties? About a third killed and wounded, sire, but they've now been replaced. What a terrible thing is war. God bless you all. Thank you. 
die, die for him. No one is to fall in love with the Tsar. Oh, don't joke, Denisov. If we fought at Schoengraben, what won't we do here? I agree, my friend, I agree, but I hear we to be reserved, so you may not get a chance. Oh, no! There's no question. Bonaparte has made a bad mistake. He's come too far, and he knows it. I saw evidence everywhere in the French camp of hurried defensive preparations. It confirms my impression that he would rather avoid an engagement. I'm certain of it. And mind you, this man is subtle. A combination of French finesse and Italian play-acting. Mm. <laughs> he received me with a courtesy which could only be false, stemming from a situation of great uncertainty. Prince Dolgorukov. Ah, Bolkonski. Is His Excellency ready to begin? General Kutuzov is just coming out. Excellent. I was just describing what happened when the Emperor of the French, as he chooses to call himself, received me in his quarters yesterday. What is he like, really? A man in a grey coat, anxious to be called Your Majesty. But he got no title from me. What did he say to you? It was more a question of what I had to say to him. I told him for a start that the price of negotiation would be his giving up Italy. I expected a tirade. He merely nodded thoughtfully. It confirms my impression. His position is insecure. Despite my deep respect for Kutuzov, we should be fools to wait about and let him escape. We must attack. But in what position are we to attack him? I toured the outpost today, and there's no making out where his main forces are concentrated. In my opinion, he is undecided what to do. He has crossed the Danube and plunged recklessly into Moravia without securing his lines of communication. He obtained a cheap success at Ulm with Mac, but he knows now he is up against it. Exactly. And we will make Kutuzov see that. Did you convey all this to His Majesty? We have his complete support. It is a good thing he is young. We need a young man at the helm. He's unable to attend, Your Excellency. Well, if the Gratian is not coming, let us begin. Perhaps I should start by saying I had an interview with His Majesty a few hours ago. He informs me that everyone he has spoken to tells him the time is right for an attack. My own feeling is quite contrary to that. In my opinion, we should wait and see what happens. We know what will happen. The French will withdraw. Well, I wouldn't necessarily regard that as a disaster. However, before every battle, a great deal of discussion must take place. In my experience, such discussion achieves very little because once a battle starts, one usually has very little choice. Still, it seems we all feel better because of it. So let us have it and get it over. Perhaps I should make a brief introduction and then hand over to General Villarotta, who has worked out a most meticulous plan, covering every eventuality, with a precision which has excited all our admiration. But first I must say that in our opinion, Bonaparte fears nothing so much now as a combined attack. His lines of communication are long, his position precarious. He exists in a hostile environment, we outnumber him. And it is the opinion of all of us here that it would be criminal folly not to take this opportunity to deliver a once-for-all lesson to this Corsican upstart. First, I want to say that I agree with every word uttered by Prince Dolgorukov. It is my belief that a combination of Austrian precision and Russian valor will carry the day at Austerlitz. All the advantages are on our side. Our immense forces are beyond the French right. I will come back to the important significance of this in a moment. Our armies are inspired by the presence of our emperors Alexander and Francis. They are eager for action. The strategic position on which the battle must be fought is known in the minutest detail to me since last year we carried out maneuvers in this very locality. 
I will now read the dispositions for the impending battle. Dispositions for an attack on the enemy behind Kobelnitz and Zakolnitz. Whereas the enemy's left wing rests on wooded hills and his right extends along Kobelnitz and Zakolnitz behind the ponds that are there, while we, on the other hand, with our left wing far outflank his right, it will be to our advantage to what attack this What on earth is he talking about? Wing. Especially if we occupy the I suppose it all makes sense to the military mind. Whereby we can fall but it's all precision and no flair. If one thing goes wrong, it all goes wrong. And, and anyway, the decision to attack has already been made. So why don't they all go home? To this end, it will be necessary to advance our left wing in columns. Moving off at first light... Suppose I'm killed tomorrow. What then? Does it matter? Tomorrow may be my chance of glory. Why do I want it so? Oh God, what am I to do if all I care for is fame? Much as I love my father, my sister, my wife, I would exchange them all tomorrow for one moment of glory. Why is that? Why? Why do I find it so hard to love someone? Truly and deeply love them. Why? 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 <laughs> well, Marshal May has a habit of doing that. Have you heard nothing from him for two weeks? I sent a messenger post haste, mm. demanding a full report on the situation in the Austrian drill. Yes. I received his communique this morning. Gentlemen, you will be glad to know the weather is fine in the Austrian Tyrol and the scenery magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> he then treats me to a lesson in military geography proving conclusively the impossibility of fighting a war in the Austrian Tyrol mm. and then adds as a postscript, oh, by the way, the Austrian army in northern Italy has ceased to exist. We await your further instructions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think you should recall him. He never accomplishes anything but the impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I must confess, I miss names in situations like this. Mm. I have the best marshals in the world. Davo, old iron face. Lan, steady as a rock. Who do you know? What an eye for an opening. And not just the military <laughs> ones. <laughs> Mura. <laughs> what school child doesn't play at being Mura? Bernadotte. Sometimes wonder whether he's not more brilliant than I am. Oh. And Stult, who believes there's only one direction for an army to march forward. You've made your names fit to conjure with around the world, but I miss Ney. He's the man to have at your back when things are going wrong, as Murat is to have at your front when they're going right. Then you'll have need of me tomorrow, not Ney. True. Tomorrow, you must win. You win quickly. The Russians will be harder to beat than the Austrians. Mm, they have courage, but little experience. I've been over and over their dispositions, and it's become clear what they intend to do. It will come down from the Pratson Heights, an era of monumental proportions. But of which we shan't complain. <laughs> These last few days, the Russians have been maneuvering to extend their left wing beyond our right. I'm doubtful. We should have let them get as far as that. No, 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 I wanted it. Tomorrow, the weather will be fine. It'll be heavy mist to begin with. Davu, you'll be placed with two divisions of infantry at Ragan to oppose this maneuver. At what point? I'll leave that to you. But in carrying out this outflanking move, the Russian left must become separated from the Russian center for a while. And they haven't fully realized how long this interval will be, but I have. The moment the time arrives, you'll attack and inform me when the attack is begun. Oh, i better get my divisions moving tonight. As soon as this meeting ends, Sult, you'll be in command of the center. And as soon as we have word from Davout that his thrust has begun, you'll move into the gap that will have opened between the Russian left and the Russian center and sever the one from the other. Bernadotte, you'll be in the left center with Murat and most of the French cavalry. Ten battalions of the Imperial Guard and ten of Udenau's division will be kept in reserve under my command. <laughs>
Are you the officer of the watch? Yes, sir. How long have those fires been lit? About an hour, sir. It's a French picket line. I thought they were still there. Volkonsky rode down earlier today. They were still there in force when I went down. I'm sure it's a trick. I'm certain that they're pulling back, and that's just a rear guard left to deceive us. Well, we shall know everything tomorrow. In any case, they haven't moved forward yet. Nor are they likely to. The position remains just as it was at the War Council. The army must move into position under cover of darkness and attack at first light. I agree. Volkonsky, you will convey all this to Marshal Kutuzov? Yes, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, may I ask a favor? What is it? My squadron is being held in reserve tomorrow. Can I be attached to the first? What is your name? Count Rostov. Ilya Rostov's son? Yes, Your Excellency. Very well, you may attend upon me. I'll send a note to your commanding officer. This victory will conclude our campaign, and we can return to winter quarters, where we shall be joined by fresh troops now mobilizing in France. And then the peace I shall conclude will be one worthy of my people, of you, and of myself. Napoleon. Contact with the man in front. Russian troops are moving down the mountainside, Your Majesty, in the direction of Sokolnitz and Schlapnitz. In strength? Yes, sir, about two divisions. It seems as if the whole of the Russian left wing is on the move. ahead are very narrow, Your Excellency. You have no business marching through narrow streets in sight of the enemy. You should have gone round. The enemy is still a long way off, Your Excellency. The dispositions... The are... dispositions! Kindly do as you are told! A long way off. How does he know where the French are? I was waiting, Your Majesty. Waiting? Not all the columns have formed up yet, sire. We are not on the Empress Field, you know, Mihail Ilarionovich, where the parade is not begun till all regiments are present. That is the reason I do not begin, sire. And because we are not on parade. And not on the Empress Field. However, if it be your majesty's command...
Give the signal. They're here! Stop them, Finn! Stop them! Get back alive! Get back! Stop! Fool! Quite different from when I was running. Ah, how was it I didn't see the sky before? So lofty, so limitless. And how happy I am to have seen it at last. Yes, all is vanity, all is delusion. Except the sky, that is wide, wide sky. Order the charge. Order an attack, Your Excellency. The left is cut from the center. Don't you understand? The French have driven a wedge right through us. I will not order an attack until I hear from Kutuzov. But Kutuzov has not been seen these past two hours. Then he must be found. Or the Emperor. Count Rostov, go and find His Excellency. Tell him we're awaiting his orders to move. Oh, it'll be too late. Too late. Go and make all speed. Yes, Your Excellency.
battle is lost at all points, sire. You must leave. You must. Dead or dying, sir. We're doing what we can for them. Fine young men. All of them. Fine deaths. Their country can be proud of them. It wasn't their fault they lost the day. They died bravely on the field of Austerlitz. It's from Austria, mistress. It has a military seal on it. There's no news of Andre. There's no news, you understand? None. Go to your room. How dare you interrupt me at this time of the morning? I just wanted to know. He's dead. Haven't I told you enough times? He's dead. You saw Kutuzov's letter. He saw him fall. What more do you want? That was two months ago, and they haven't found the body. Fool! Do you know what it's like on a battlefield? 20,000 dead at Austerlitz. Do you think each gets a grave to himself? He's dead. Your brother is dead. Speak no more of him. Do you hear me? No more! Oh, Father, don't turn away from me, please. Don't shut me up. Not this time. We mustn't lose hope. Perhaps he's lying ill somewhere, trying to get in touch with us. He's dead. Only fools can hope. When the facts stare them plainly in the face and tell them otherwise. If he were...
anyone alive, we would have heard something. But he's dead. My son is dead. Killed by those scoundrels who destroyed the Russian army between them. That letter is the last inquiry I shall make. Go. Go and tell Lisa. Tell her her husband is dead. Go get out of my sight. Well then, if we cannot weep together, we must weep alone. of his inquiries to Austria, who yielded nothing. Oh, Amity, I'm afraid he's right. We shan't see my brother again. No. You must not give up hope. What could Tussop saw him fall? It's foolish to go on hoping, just because the body wasn't found, that he's still alive. I must tell Lisa. In her condition? We kept the news of Kutusov's letter from her while there was still hope. But now she must know. Oh, Maria, come here. Did you feel it? <laughs> yes. Quite a heartache. I can hardly believe it. <laughs> is there something wrong? What is it? News of Andre? No. No news. Did Papa hear nothing to his inquiry? Not yet. But he will, I'm sure. Oh, Maria, why must I have my child like this? What have I done? Why did he go? Who knows? I'm hopelessly lost without him. Oh, hush. And I'm not well. No, I know I'm not. I know Papa doesn't believe me, but there's something wrong. I know there is. No, it's just the child, that's all. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. All right, all right. Give me time. Merciful heavens! It's the young Count. Where are they? At supper. But I can't believe my eyes. Is it really you, Count? It's really me, Prokofi. Home on leave. Is everything all right? Praise be! Everything! Everything! Your son's quick. Denise, oh. Denise, oh. 
Of course, of course, Denise. <laughs> oh, everybody, see who's here. It's Denise. <laughs> Davina, Natasha, Anna. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Nikolai wrote us all about you. You're welcome to our home. Oh, welcome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Natasha, that's not a way to greet a stranger. But it's not a stranger, it's Denise. Oh, 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 we you must be starving. Oh, of course, yes, forgive of course me, forgive me. Uh, yes. Prokofi, what are you? Oh, well, yes, quite a long way to do Everybody, come back into the dining room, please. Crack of dawn. Vera, ring the knee song. Countess, my pet, my love, let the boy go. He's not going to run away. Then he just got here. Please, Did you have a good journey? Why the wearisome, Countess? Why the wearisome? Nikolai? Nikolai, get up. It's ten o'clock. <laughs> it's ten o'clock, Nikki. You can't sleep all morning. <laughs> Good heavens, can't a chap even get some sleep? There. You frightened Sonia away. Oh, put your dressing gown on and come out. What time did you say it was? Ten o'clock. We were up hours ago. Oh, all right. Wait a minute. I'll be in the conservatory. Well, let me have some breakfast first. Oh, no, come now, Nicky. Please. All right. Can I see your sabre? Uh, Any sop up yet? Not yet. My soldiers sleep late. Well, when you're in the field, you're up at the crack of dawn, you know. <laughs> There's no need for that here, is there? Where's Sonia? Well, she ran away. You shouldn't just appear in your nightshirt like that. We're not children anymore. When did you grow your moustache? Before the battle or after? After. Are you glad to be home? Of course I am. <laughs> but I love the army. Did you see Napoleon? Of course not. Oh. But I saw the Tsar. When the battle was nearly over. Alone in a field. I felt so sorry for him. Do you know, Natasha, I could have died for him then and there. Oh, Nicky, I'm glad you didn't. It would have been awful. Well, I didn't have to, fortunately. <gasps> Why don't you fetch Sonia? In a minute. I must tell you something first. You know Sonia's my best friend. I'd burn my hand off for her, Nikki. Look, I'd, I did that just to show how much I loved her. I just heated a ruler and pressed it there. Do you think that was silly? No, no, of course not. Did she do the same? Well, she would have done, only she was afraid you might see her with a scar on her arm, so I said she shouldn't. But if she loves someone, it's forever. Yes. Yes, she's like that. I don't think I am. She is. And she loves you like that. Was that what you wanted to tell me? No. Thank you, Papa. Well? Do you remember what happened before you went away? Well, with Sonia. Both of you swore you would never love anyone else. Well, she says you are to forget all that. She said, I shall always love him but let him be free. Isn't that lovely? Isn't it noble? Yes. Yes, it is. But I never go back on my word. No, we discussed all that. We knew you'd say that, but it won't do, you see, because 
If you consider yourself bound by the promise, it would look as if she'd said all that on purpose, don't you see? As if she wanted to tie you even more, and she doesn't want that. Well, that's exactly what she doesn't want. She loves you too much, Nikki. You must remain free. Well... Oh, I don't know. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> it's so good to be back with you all. Are you still true to Boris? Oh, that's just nonsense. I saw him just before the last battle. He's really changed. Well, I shan't marry him. I shan't marry anyone. Is Denisov nice? <laughs> yes, of course he is. He's a wonderful chap. <laughs> well, hurry up and get dressed. I'll go and find some. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, Boris should go far. You can be proud, Anna. Well, I did all I could, but oh, he has repaid me a thousandfold. You know Prince Polkonsky Kutuzov's aide took him under his wing? Just before he was killed. So many fine young men. Mm. When I think of our Nikolai, or Boris, lying out there. Good morning, Mama. Good morning, Vera. Oh, good, good morning, morning, my love. Yeah, and how are you this morning? Oh, what a question. <laughs> My son comes home last night. He asked me how I feel this morning. <laughs> <sighs> Nikolai looks wonderful, Natalie. Wonderful, doesn't he? <laughs> I just wish he'd shave off that moustache. Oh, I think it suits him. You would think it suits him. Wait till you have a son of your own. See if you'll like him with a moustache. He's home, my dear. Moustache or beard, what does it matter? True. There's plenty that didn't come back. Are Nikolai and his friend up yet? I haven't seen them. The girls are up. They had breakfast an hour ago. Oh. Sonia seems beside herself. I've never seen her so excited. You need to be careful there, my dear. Oh, don't I know it. She's my niece, and we're very fond of her. I didn't take her in to marry my son. He's a good match. He'll command a wife with a diary bigger than all your estates outside Moscow. Which, by the way, have just been mortgaged again. Well, the oh. children have to enjoy themselves. But how long can it go on? Oh, we shall pay it all somehow. Don't worry, my pet. It's been a bad harvest. Mm. Everyone has suffered. All the same, if he's going to get married, why shouldn't he bring something into the family? Mm. You'll have to speak to Sonia. No, Natalie. He leaves and everything to me. It's a little premature anyway, isn't it? After all, they're young. They could grow out of it. Exactly. They're still children. And you're trying to marry them all. <laughs> I think people should marry for love anyway. Because a man chooses a woman with a dowry, is that to say he can't love her as well? In any case, my dear. Even if you marry for love, it doesn't mean to say that the rest is all roses. Oh. <laughs> Look at Pierre the Sukhov. Mm. Oh, a fool could have told him Elena Karagina was no good. A fool could have told him, but a fool doesn't listen. And a man in love is a fool. Mm. What's this then? Are they not happy? I sometimes wonder what you do all day. You know so little of what's going on. My dear, she has a lover. Dolohov, an old friend of Pierre's. Everyone knows, except Pierre. Isn't that always the way? <laughs> Is that why they left Petersburg and came to Moscow? To uh, escape Dolohov? Oh, I shouldn't think so. Yes, perhaps. Now, probably Pierre both knows and yet doesn't want to know. What a terrible thing. Terrible. Well, I hope his trip to Moscow settles things for him. Dolohov, I call to pay my respects. I thought you were in Petersburg. I arrived yesterday. Good evening, my dear. How is the opera? It was very boring. You were right not to come. What are you doing in Moscow? My mother still lives here, you know. Ah, yes. How is she? Very well. And then I thought I'd call on a few old friends. Nikolai Rostov, for instance. Ah, 
You know the Rostov? Mm, I met the Count in the army. He invited me to call when I was in Moscow. Ah. Well, I must be going. Okay. Good night, Countess. Good night. I hope we shall see something of you while you're here. Of course. It will be a pleasure. Good night, Count. Oh, good night. No, don't come down. I can see myself out. I'll go to bed. Did you know he was coming? No. Why should I? He's your friend, not mine. Yes, but you like him, though. Well, I find him amusing, don't you? Yes, yes. Well, not exactly amusing, but still, if he's here, he must call, I suppose. Would you rather he didn't? No, 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 no. It's just that... Just uh... at what? Well, he seemed to be around us all the time in Petersburg. It was you who took him up? Yeah. There's an old friend. I thought I might be of some help to him. And then, uh... Well, there's a streak of cruelty in Dolohov. Haven't you noticed? No. I've chosen his face sometimes. I hadn't noticed it before. Oh, good night. Good night. <laughs> a friend. This is Lieutenant Dolohov. We knew each other in the army. My sister Natasha. Delighted. My cousin Sonia. Ah, charming, charming. And Colonel Vasily Denisov, my squadron commander. Colonel? <laughs> Glad to meet a mother of Sonia, boy. We seem to have interrupted a rather gay evening. Ah. No, we were practicing. <laughs> Yogel's giving a ball here on Thursday. You'll be here, Nicky, won't you? Who is Yogel? He's our dancing master. Oh. He's giving it for his former pupils. Oh, say so you'll be here, mm. Nicky. Yeah, especially for you. I don't know. It's good stuff, really. Oh, <laughs> oh it's not. Vasily is going to be uh, here. Whatever for? What would I not do at your sister's request, dear boy? <laughs> oh, do come, Nicky. It will be fun. And you come too, Lieutenant. I'm sure I should be delighted. There. You're the only one who hasn't said yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. But it's a very small affair, I warn you. Oh, really? Well, I'm not averse to small affairs. It is nothing of the sort. It's a lot of fun. The girls only go there looking for husbands. <laughs> they do not. Oh, oh, you're insufferable this evening. Oh, sick. Come on, come on. Vasily, get her off me. No, 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 no. Just wait, Mike. You'll get her up yourself. Don't, I'll mess your hair up. They don't what? Go there looking for husbands. <laughs> All right, they don't, they don't, they don't. <laughs> there, you see. They don't. <laughs> well, I don't think it's such a very bad thing. Anyway, after all, husbands must be found somewhere. <laughs> What a very pretty necklace. May I? It, it was a present from Nikolai on my tenth birthday. That isn't worth anything. Mm, exquisite. Um, what about a tune, Colonel? After all, if I'm coming to Yogel's Ball, I really ought to practice. <laughs> very well. What should it be? Uh, oh, something oh. slow and stately. All right, all right. On this. On this, yes. yes. Would you care to remind me of some of the steps? Dance, Count Rostov, I insist. Oh, Maestro, you know I could never do it. Nonsense, nonsense. You had great talent. Countess, I appeal to you. Come on, Nicky. Don't be so stuffy. Oh, all right. But next time is Denisov's turn. <laughs> there they go. They must be the handsomest couple on the floor. Yes. Why is Nikolai always so stiff? The effects of the army, obviously. Vasily isn't stiff and he's in the army. But look at your daughter, man. What grace. What natural beauty. 
fly so stiff. I don't like to see him so stiff. It's his personality, Natalie. You'll never change. It was always very straight, my pet. I call it stiff. Have you noticed Dollarhoff with your niece? He has been dancing rather a lot with her. Now then, stop making matches, you two. Who's making matches? And that made knocks a fish. One can't live with one's eyes closed, dear. Not at all. You must get off your hands sooner or later. I definitely don't like it. You took a dislike to him from the start. I did not. You did? You said you didn't like his face. Well, I don't. That's ridiculous. Besides, I've heard things about him. Oh, what things? He has been Countess Bazuhoff's lover. Who told you? I heard. Rubbish. And he fights Jews. Well, so do lots of people. But he provokes them. Oh, rubbish. Don't keep saying, oh, rubbish. Look at the way he's holding her. You just don't like my friends. I like Denisov. Oh, Denisov. You only like him because he's in love with you. Sonia, you look beautiful this evening. My dear, doesn't she, Anna? Radiant. We will say how beautifully you dance with Lieutenant Dollarhoff. She dances as if she'd done nothing else all her life. <laughs> Nicky, must you hold yourself like a ramrod when you dance, my dear? Mother, I'm not making it a profession. Still, a ramrod, dear. <laughs> what magnificent dancers, all of you. Sonny, my dear, there's a young man over there dying to dance the next dance with It's you. been promised. Oh, but Lieutenant Troy, Promised. I promised the next dance to Nikolai. He hasn't danced with me all evening. Well, you haven't forgotten, Nikolai. Oh, no, no, of course not. Ah, the mazurka! This is where I score! Three counters, join me in the mazurka! Can you really do it? <laughs> can I do the mazurka? I can do a better mazurka than the poles! <laughs> I'll show you how to dance a wheel mazurka! The mazurka is not my dance maestro. However, if the Countess Rostov should care to try... Why not? We can't do worse than my brother.
come in. Helen. I was just going to bed. Yes. I see. I just wanted to talk. What about? Well, I've been thinking... Have you seen Dolohov lately? No. He seems to stop calling. Yeah. Have you said anything to him? No, what should I have said to him? I don't know, I just wondered. Perhaps your attitude discouraged him. I had no attitude. He was free to call or not, as he chose. Perhaps he's just gone away. Oh, no. I hear he's a frequent visitor at the Rostovs. Do you have to wear those glasses? Do you care whether he calls? I told you I find him amusing. I could inquire. There's no need. I don't find him that amusing. You know, I had a letter today from Maria Bolkonskaya. I'm sure it was fascinating. Well, I wrote inquiring after Andre. His body hasn't been found. It seems now that it won't be. <laughs> a charming thought to go to bed with. I thought you might like to know. Is that what you came in to tell me? No. It just crossed my mind. But I feel so sorry for Lisa. Having a child and Andre dead, never seeing me. It's so sad, too, because they weren't happy, you know. He's such a restless spirit. Andre. I was searching for something. I was searching. But then aren't we all I searching like to for something? The bed. Yes. He made her very unhappy. Poor Lisa. She's the sort of girl who needs her husband near her all the time. Now she's alone, having the child, no husband to show to when it's born. War's a terrible thing. Terrible. And yet I suppose the child will have her when it's born. <laughs> Helen, I wanted to ask you something. Um, has there been any sign? Or do you feel as though you were going to have a child? Whatever do you take me for? I just I'm it. tired. I'd like to go to bed. Dolohov, you can tell him that we're cross, that he's dropped us so obviously. Now, choose one. I'll choose. No, it's <laughs> Sonia. I'm sure she'll bring me luck and make the trick work. You have to speak to her. Come on, Polly, don't be silly. Choose one. Oh, it's too soon. He may only be amusing himself. Now, put it back in the pack. I must say, Dolohoff, I wouldn't care to play you at cards. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning what? He means, dear boy, that you handle yourself like a professional. Anything I do, I do like a professional. Uh -huh. no. Do you see your card there? Did you put it in there? Yes. Now, if Petya will take out the card that is in his right hand pocket. Mine? I haven't got a. Oh, 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 oh,
King, we choose well. You should never choose anything less. Do another one, another yes, one. Yes, oh, yes. Oh, no, I should be getting a bad reputation. It doesn't seem to be here. Oh, really? Now, uh, where did I put it? Oh, what a pleasant evening. What a nice young man that Lieutenant Dollarhoff is. Yes. Seems to like you. At least he seems very attentive. In my experience, he's a man in love. Oh, don't say that, please. Come here. Come on. You know, Sonia, you've lived with us all these years. I know, Mama, and I love you, and I'll never forget all that you've done for me. <laughs> I'm not reminding you of it so that you can be grateful. You're like my own child. So I must advise you as if you were. Please don't speak of it. I must, my dear. We've given you all we can. We cannot give you a dowry. I don't want it. But then it must limit you. You can't make a brilliant marriage without a dowry. Now, I think Dollarhoff will make you a proposal. It's quite a good match. And I must advise you to think of it carefully if he does. <laughs> oh, please, my dear, don't cry. Life has many problems, believe me. We can't always have what we want. If you refuse his offer, you may not get another as good. I'll promise at least. You'll give it careful thought, hmm? Yes. I have the family to think of too, you know, Sonia. No one else thinks of it. It's all left to me. What can I do? I'm not a magician. Be sensible. Yes. I thought it best to be honest. Ah, uh, yes. Honest. Are you in love with her? In a way. You surprise me. I surprise myself. I thought such feelings were for others. You never entertain them for me. Ah, you, well, that was different. I held him in check. Why? Well, you were hardly available as a wife. Wouldn't you be satisfied with less? I feel it's time I got married. I see. Well, after all, you must have felt the same. I'm a woman. I can't provide for myself. Well, what could I do? You weren't free. Would you have married me if I had been? Of course. <laughs> ah, but I shouldn't have married you. Your accomplishments are not of the kind to pay the bills. Will she accept you? I think so. But you haven't actually asked her. I shall ask her tomorrow. She has no dowry, of course, but that makes my chances greater. Still, she may refuse you. I doubt it. Yes, so do I. But if she does? Then I shall need your divine consolation. You shall have it, although you don't deserve it. Me luck at least. Why should I? I hope she says no. Where are you going? Out. Don't you stay to dinner? Uh, thank you, no. What's the matter? Nothing, nothing. Well, stay a while. I have an appointment with a lady whose husband is away this evening. I mustn't keep her waiting. Sonia, wait! Nicky! What's the matter with Sonia? He proposed! I knew he wouldn't. She refused him. Refused him? Mama begged and begged her not to, but she did. Mama begged her not to? Well, of course. Nicky, don't be angry. But I know you won't marry her. But don't ask me how I know. I just do. She's an angel. Go and talk to her. Perhaps you can get her to change her mind. But why should I? Because, Nicky, she may spoil her life if you don't. You must be honest with her.
Sonia. Don't say anything, please. But I must. If you're refusing him because of I me. I don't want to know, Nikolai. But I want to tell you the truth. I love you. Oh, that's enough for me. But I can't make any promises. Mama doesn't want it. We're both young. We may change our minds. I shan't. But I'm not holding you to anything. Please, think about it again. The offer's a good one. He's a friend of mine. It would be an advantageous match. I don't want to talk about it. Please. I want nothing. I love you. I shall always love you, and that's all I want. I'm only afraid of misleading you. You're an angel, and I don't deserve it. Oh, Nicky. Nicky. <laughs> Storm a break. Birds dust them away when they're in God's hands. Praise be the child's all right. Doug Father, what good is it? It's another life. Praise God for it. You see, them that's born in a storm and they're in sunshine. Why do they say God is merciful? I, I don't know. What harm she done? She's good and kind. She loves everyone. Someone's coming. Masha! Masha! Has it happened yet? Yes, but... Where is she? Andre! Andre! You can't come in, don't come in! Accusing. No. It's as if she were saying, where were you? Why weren't you here? What use are your spectacles, my friend, if you cannot see that Dolohov is your wife's lover? I'm going out to some friends. Couldn't you have stayed at home? You're going to a party. Why shouldn't I? It's not a party. It's a banquet in honor of General Kutuzov. Well, doubtless you'll enjoy it. Count Rostov always manages these things very well. Since the banquet is for men only, I can see no reason to sit here alone until you get back. Will you be home late? Probably. You needn't wait up. Dollarhoff will be there. At the banquet. I know. I thought of asking him back for a drink. Do as you please. I thought he amused you. He does, but I'm not dependent upon it. You may give him my regards when you see him. Good night.
Now it seems, Colonel, we must make peace with the French. Yes, Count, we will make peace, but it will be an honorable one, because Napoleon knows, and despite Austerlitz, that our great Russian army was not defeated, only deserted. Absolute mince me, Absolutely. The French cavalry are every bit as good as us. I give you a test. To no, the French no, cavalry. Now, let's no, drink to something a little more yeah, simple now. What about, um... The husbands of all pretty women. Yes, much better. <laughs> I'll drink to that. What do you drink to that, Count? <laughs> I don't think you heard you. I say, Count, we're drinking to the husbands of all pretty women. Is it true? Is he really my wife's lover? I don't know. But he's trying to provoke me. Well, I won't be provoked. He'd enjoy killing me because he's a bully. He thinks I'm afraid of him. Well, I am. I am. I would have thought you'd have drunk to that, Count. Civilians never look on husbands the same way that soldiers do. <laughs> my friends. Oh, my friends. Tonight, we honor a man who has given his whole life in the service of our country. Hear, hear, hear. A soldier before whose stern demeanor the enemies of our country have ever quailed. Bravo! I refer, of course, to His Excellency Mikhail Ilarionovich Kutuzov. Yes. But before we drink his health, our local poet Narishkin has composed a short poem in his honor, oh, wonderful. which I beg you gentlemen to hear, written very far better than I could. The true feelings of us all on this memorable occasion. Now it's here. Verses to commemorate the banquet given by Count Rostov in honor of His Excellency Mikhail Ilarionovich Kutuzov, March 1806. Be thou the pride of Alexander's reign. Make by thy efforts our land a haven. Live thy deeds till memory wane of Austerlitz and Schoengraben. Mm. <laughs> Tremble, proud and haughty Bonaparte. Tremble in consternation. Kutuzov is the living heart of our holy Russian nation. Holy Drink to the hero of the last campaign, Mikhail Larionovich Kutuzov. What's the matter with you? Get on your feet! To Russia's greatest soldier! Uh, well, where should we go afterwards, eh? Zydel's place. The girls have put in there. Not half you coming? Ah, uh, no, I have an appointment with a lady. Ah, <laughs> married, of course. Of course. <laughs> and which? Naturally. <laughs> Pretty? Couldn't be sweeter. Uh, <laughs> As a matter of fact, her husband is here tonight. He's a very good friend of mine. Oh, you tickle his fancy then, one might say. Regularly. <laughs> 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 so does that priority here, I think. I dare you! I challenge you! I challenge you! The of our sovereign, the Tsar! The Tsar! The Tsar! The Tsar!
I should not be doing my duty, Count, if I did not speak the truth. I consider this affair has not sufficient grounds to warrant the shedding of blood. You were in the wrong. You lost your temper. Yes, yes, I agree. It was my fault. My fault. You know, it's far more honourable to admit one's mistake than to allow things to proceed to the irrevocable. Apart from which, the man's a noted duelist. Allow me to express your regrets. What? Allow me to confer. No, 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 no. What is there to talk about? It doesn't matter anyway. Where's the pistol? Didn't mean it, Fadia. Let me ask him for an apology. No apologies, none. Except the swords. Yes, yes, I understand. It's only I had forgotten. You may advance as far as your own sword and fire at will, but you must not, under any circumstances, go beyond your sword. Yes, I understand. Since the adversaries refuse a reconciliation, we may proceed. Take your pistols, and at the word three, advance. One. Two. Three. It's not over. Keep back. It's not over. Cover yourself. Turn sideways. Death and lies. All death and lies. Oh, oh, God, I missed him. I missed him. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's twice within a month. First, your cousin and then him. Damn them. Damn them. This will kill her, Rostov. Can't just fix all of her. My mother. Take me home, Rostov. Take me home. I've killed him. I've killed my wife's lover. Yes, that's what I've done. But why? How did it come to this? Because I married her. And I never loved her. Why do these things happen? I don't know. I don't know how I came to marry her or anything. Things just seem to happen. But now I've made it worse. I've killed a man in an affair of honor. But it was all jealousy. And for a depraved woman. Yes. That's what she is. I know that now.
fool. What have I done? What on earth did you imagine you were doing? Playing the hero? No, not at all. What were you hoping to prove? That he was my lover? You believe everything you're told, don't you? Well, you have made a laughing stock of both of us. Everybody will think that you were drunk, that you challenged a man you were jealous of for no, no it reason. Wasn't like that at all. Then why did you think he was my lover? Because I like his company? Please. If you had more about you, I might have preferred yours. Please don't speak to me. Who else should I speak to? Oh, fortunately for you, he's not dead. Or else I should have enjoyed watching the consequences. I think we should part, yes, Wonderful. Martha. Nothing could make me happier. But you'll provide for me. You don't imagine you can just shrug me off, Please, do you? Please, go! I'll be glad to. Living with you has been the embarrassment of my life. I'll tell you! I'll tell you! Get out of my sight! Get out! How's your friend today, Count? He's much better, for coffee, thank you. The doctor called while I was there, pronounced a wound finally clean. Thank God. Thank God, sir. The young ones are in the drawing room, as you can hear. What? Proposed. Denisov's made me an offer. Don't talk nonsense. I'm not. He did ask Sonia. Well, then he's a donkey, that's all I can say. Oh, he's not. Oh, what a thing to say, Mama. He's in love with me. Oh, you're all in love these days. Oh, don't say that. It's serious. Well, if you're in love with him, go and marry him. But I'm not in love with him. But it was serious, though I don't think he meant to say it. You mean it was seriously unintended? Hmm. Better go and refuse him. How? What shall I say? Do you want me to come and do it? No, I'll do it myself. Only tell me what to say. Simply say that you're honoured by his proposal, but you must refuse him. Oh, I feel so sorry for him. You don't marry a man because you feel sorry for him. But he's so nice. I like him. Then accept him. High time you were married anyway. Oh, Mama, tell me what to say. I'll tell him myself. Oh. Be nice to him. Mm. Vasily Dmitrievich, I thank you for the honor you do us, but my daughter is too young. I, I know it, Countess. And I would have thought as my son's friend, you would have addressed yourself to me first. Oh, Countess, I have acted wrongly. But pray believe me, I so adore your daughter and your whole family. Well, I was intending to return to my regiment with your son next week, but I'll go tomorrow. There's no need, Vasily Dmitrich. You're very kind, but I should prefer it. Goodbye. 
by. Count us. Yes, yes, yes. We've yes, had yes. such a demand for them. So many travellers. Yes, as soon as you can, can Oh, yes, Count, of course. If they have not arrived within the hour, I shall let you have the horses reserved for the mail. But I'm not supposed to, yes. as you will understand. Can I get you something to eat? No, thank you. Get them as soon as possible. I want to be in Petersburg as soon as night is over. Oh, yes, Count, of course. Of course. He seems to be short of horses. Yes, or pretending to be. Have you been here long? About an hour. Still, you'll be more fortunate than I. You'll get the post horses if necessary. Yes. He judges me for a larger tip than you. <laughs> Probably. You are Count Bezucha, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Forgive me, have we met? You were pointed out to me at a reception in Moscow once, but we never actually met. I feel for you deeply. Hmm? I have, of course, heard of you and the misfortune that has befallen you. You are unhappy. If you feel averse to talking to me, please say so, my dear sir. No, 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 no. It's better to pass the time in company. I felt simply a desire to hold out a brotherly hand to you. I belong to an order that believes in that. Are you a mason? Yes. I belong to the Brotherhood of Freemasons. And in their name and in my own, I hold out to you a brotherly hand. Thank you. Well, I'm afraid, uh... How shall I put it? Uh, I'm afraid my way of thinking in regard to the whole theory of the universe is so opposed to yours that we may not understand each other. Do you think your way may really be described as a way of thinking about the universe? Yes, I think so. Well, surely it is nothing more than a melancholy delusion. Yes, perhaps yours is also. Perhaps. But think, the whole truth, when we perceive it, is something we must feel inside us. When it is known, the feeling will be intense. Do you feel your way of thinking about the universe an intense perception? Yet you are a searcher after truth. And you say you have a way of thinking quite opposed to mine, and yet you do not feel it intensely. If it were the truth, do you not think you would? Well, one may feel a delusion as intensely as one may feel the truth. Yet it would be intensely felt. Your way of thinking about the universe is no more intensely felt by you than your way of playing cards or your way of dressing. So, you have a way of life which you can put against mine and say it is equally valid. But examine your own life, my dear sir. How have you spent it? In debauchery, taking everything and giving nothing. You've inherited great wealth. What have you done for your fellow man? What have you done for your serfs? You've profited by their toil to lead a dissipated life. You married a young woman and gave her no guidance or help. Oh. A man offends you and you shoot him. And yet you are not happy. Where then is your way of thinking about the universe? Where does it come in? I don't know. What is the use of a way of thinking about the universe that excludes God? I cannot believe in God. You do not know him. That is why you are unhappy. He exists. But to understand him is hard. How can you know he exists? How can I ever know it when my mind denies it? It is not the mind that comprehends God. It is life that makes us understand. How is it then that human reason cannot attain this knowledge? The, the mind can know only what it suits the mind by its nature to know. 
The mind was never intended to be the gateway to this knowledge. Supreme wisdom is like the pure dew. Can you receive this pure dew into an unclean vessel and then judge of its purity? No. First, there must be inner purification of the vessel. Yes, that's true. I can see that. The intellectual knowledge of the world is divided into the science of physics, chemistry, history, and so on, because this is the way the mind must work. But supreme wisdom is one. The science of all. To receive this wisdom, one must first purify the inner vessel that is to take it. How? You are not satisfied with your life. I hate my life. Then change it. There are two ways they go hand in hand. One is to meditate and think of one's life and change it from within. The other is to begin by doing good works. For the outer doing has an inward effect and hastens the process of purification. Yes. There are many things I could do on my estates. Build hospitals and schools. Yeah. Lighten the daily toil. Why have I not thought of these things before then? Tell me. Why? The horses are ready, sir. Oh, thank you. I shall harness up the courier horses for you, sir. Thank though you. it's against the rules. Yes, thank you. Well, I thank you, sir, for your conversation. You were going to Petersburg? Yes, perhaps we could meet. I feel you could help me as I told Help is given from God alone. But such measure of aid as is in the power of our brotherhood to give, you shall have. I, unfortunately, am old and in retirement, but I shall send someone to call on you who will bring you within our craft. And now I wish you a good journey and all success. You never told me your name. Bazdeev. Osip Alexeyevich Bazdeev. Good night. Good night, and thank you. Enter. candidate is here. Has he considered? Yes. Has he considered again and again? Yes. Is he prepared? Yes. In body, mind and heart? Yes. Let the candidate enter. From what are you come hither? From the evil of the world, from the evil in myself. Why have you, who do not believe in the light and the truth, come here? I come to seek them. What do you seek? Is it wisdom? Is it virtue? Is it enlightenment? I seek regeneration. Truly you seek it? Yeah. With all your heart and all your soul? Yeah. Who among us sends you to us? Osip Alexeyevich Bazdeev. Come with me. Whatever happens, endure if you wish to become one of us.
symbolizes strength and purity, you must try never, never to stain it. With the trowel, toil to eradicate from your heart all traces of vice or vicious feelings. As to the white gloves, the significance of the first pair you may never know. The second you must wear to all meetings of this lodge. The third pair you will see fit a woman's hand. Give them only to the woman you hold above all others, the one you select to be your worthy helpmeet. But take care, dear brother, never to deck hands that are unclean. Six transit, Gloria, Monday. Study our signs and our mysteries till they are familiar to you as your own hand. In our temple, we recognize no other degrees but those between vice and virtue. Beware of making distinctions that transgress equality. Fly to your brother's aid wherever he may be. Raise him that hath fallen. Never harbor anger or enmity against thy brother. Be kind and courteous. Forgive thine enemies. Return good for evil. Thus shalt thou recover traces of the ancient dignity that thou hast lost. Thou hast become one of us. Michelle, the regiment has a dance tonight. Are you coming? What are we going to do for girls? Don't worry. We're bringing some in from the next village. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're quite wrong. I think the two emperors will get on better than their magic. The noble soul of Alexander and the practical mind of Napoleon. <laughs> it's a beautiful fusion. It is a chemistry that may ensure the peace for a long time to come. The peace to come. Let French and Russians drink to that. Nikolai, what on earth are you doing in Tilsit? Come in. I seem to be intruding. No, not at all. We're just entertaining our opposite numbers on the French staff. Here, let me introduce you. Don't bother. I wanted a word with you, that's all. Well, can't you wait? As you see, I have guests, and if you won't... Stay... French. There's no need for that. What was it you wanted? Doesn't matter. Don't, don't be silly. Excuse me a moment, I'll be back. Well, how is everyone at home? Uh, very well. Your mother sends her love. Oh, thank you. Uh, when were you there? I left about a month ago. Uh, did you come to Tilsit to catch a glimpse of the great man? Oh, Bonaparte? The Emperor Napoleon. He'll always be Bonaparte to me. I don't know how you can stand having these French around. The two emperors meet tomorrow in the river Niemann on a raft to sign a truce. We've got to get used to one another. We're no longer enemies. Well, I find it very hard to get used to. But then, I'm not on the staff. What was it you wanted to see me about? A squadron commander, Denisov, is facing a court-martial. What for? He commandeered a food wagon that was intended for HQ. He shared the food out among the men. They'd had no rations for three weeks. It's a foolish thing to do. He's a first-rate officer and brave as you like. It's the sort of thing he would do. But a court-martial would have to find him guilty. What can I do? I persuaded him to petition the Tsar. I've got it here. Well, you know so many people close to the Tsar. I thought you could find a way of getting it to him. <laughs> his Majesty is very strict on such points. I think it would be better not to bring it to His Majesty's attention, but to apply directly to the Corps Commander. If I'd wanted to apply to the Corps Commander, I wouldn't have come here. Do you want to help or not? Well, of course I do. I'm only trying to think of a way of helping your friend. Boris, come here, will you? Wait a minute. I'll be back.
This is a meeting too long delayed. I too am delighted. I hope it will be the first of many. Europe cannot afford to have Russia and France at each other's throats. There is no sense to it. There is no conflict of interest of which I am aware that cannot be settled amicably. For our part, we are ready to do all we can to assist the peace of Europe. Sire, as a token of the affection in which my people hold yours, allow me to confer upon your majesty's person the Légion d'honneur. Putting medals on each other now, marvellous, isn't it? Still, they don't have to do the bloody fighting, do they? What right have you to criticise the Emperor? Well, I was only saying... You've got no right to say. We're soldiers, not diplomats. It's our duty to die when we're commanded, not to be judges. If we were to judge and argue over everything, where would we be? There'd be nothing left sacred. No God, nothing. <laughs> Surprise, what a surprise. Where have you come from? Oh, visiting my estates, an inspection tour. I found myself near Bogacharovo, sir. <laughs> it's good to see you. Wonderful, wonderful. Are you well? Recovered? Oh, yes. I was so sorry to hear about Lisa. How's the child? Nikolai, he's well. He's at Bald Hills with Maria. Let's go up to the house. Oh, no, it's such a fine day. Let's sit here. You're building, I see. Yes, I decided to come and live at Bogacharovo. It's always been a favorite place of mine. But it needs a lot of work. Hmm. Anton, bring some wine, will you please? Well. So you didn't go back into the army? After Austerlitz? No. I shall never serve with the Russian army again. They're all a pack of careerist fools, myself included. We should leave such things to people who understand them, like Bonaparte. Ha! You mean the Emperor, Napoleon? If that's what people are calling him now, it makes no difference. But what about you? You're married, I hear. Yes. Yes, that's all over now, finished. Heard about the duel, I suppose. Yes. You had to go through that, too. Yes. I only thank God that I didn't kill the man. Why? To kill a vicious dog isn't a crime? No, but to kill a man is. I think that's the worst evil one can do, take another man's life. I don't see it. I know of only two real evils in life, remorse and illness. The only good is the absence of both of them. Oh, no, I can't agree with you. That's such a negative outlook. I mean, to live with the... live with the sole object of avoiding evil. And I used to do that myself, but not anymore. At least I try not to now. Now at least I try to live for other people. You have the enthusiasm of a convert. Or why not? What is it that you've been converted to? You won't laugh? No, of course not. I'm a Freemason. I know. It sounds ridiculous, but... I can't tell you, Andre, what it's done for me. You know, I... I sank to my lowest level after the duel. I didn't know which way to turn. Yes, I can understand that. I lived only for myself, but now I live for others. I have found true peace. And who are these others? My serfs, for instance. I never even thought of helping them. They live in squalor, they die of curable diseases, they know no rest day or night. For instance, I've just come back from my estates and I... I can't tell you. I, I was appalled at what I saw. Oh, well, if you must have an occupation, doing good will do as well as any other. Ah, that's cynical. You don't believe that, really, do you? Well, I can see you want an argument. All right, drink up. Let's walk a little.
The great thing is that I know for certain that the enjoyment of doing good is the only true happiness in life. Your happiness. So you're back to living for yourself again, which isn't so far from what I was saying. No, 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 you're twisting everything. Listen, just listen. That I enjoy doing good is one thing. That other people benefit is something else, much, much greater. Well, let's take a look at it. You talk of schools. Yes. You want to lift the peasant out of his animal existence, when in my view, animal existence is the only possible happiness. It's awful thought, dreadful. You want dreadful. to make him like me without giving him my means. No, no, not at all. You didn't understand. Listen. Then you say, lighten his toil. Yes. But physical labor is as essential to him as intellectual labor is to us, and hospitals. And throwing him into hospitals. One peasant has a seizure and is dying. You want to patch him up so he can drag on as a cripple for the next ten years, a burden to himself and to others. How on earth can you live with such ideas? What point is there in your life, then? To get through it, there's little pain to oneself and hurt to others. Oh, well, just uh, sit back without stirring, without embarking on anything, then. Life won't leave one in peace. My father's been put in charge of recruiting in this area and insists that I help him. And then you are in the service after all. Yes. Why? My father's a remarkable man. But he's so used to unlimited power that he can sometimes be cruel. I'm the only person he'll listen to. So you're there to mitigate his effect for the benefit of other people? No, for his own good. He doesn't like himself at such times. You want to liberate the serfs. I too. But not for their sake. For the sake of the serf owners, who are themselves brutalized by too much power. No! No! A thousand times no! Never believe that. Never! Never believe that. So, you say, get through life as best one can without hurting others. All right. But one can do more. Our brotherhood of Freemasonry, we can do more. We can help beautify life instead of just accepting its brutality. You behold the reign of goodness and truth on earth. I don't. Do you believe in the future life? I don't know. Can you think it possible that our life here on Earth is the end of all things? I can't believe it. I don't believe it. I can't. I feel in my soul as though I'm part of that vast, harmonious whole we call the universe. You do as well, but you won't admit it. No, I won't admit it. How can I? When someone who is dear to you and whom you have wronged by not showing her that dearness suddenly ceases to exist for no reason, vanishes. But it's a delusion to believe that she exists somewhere, forgiving her. No. No, her forgiveness is in the child. She left you. And in all the possibilities of good that are in you to do. My dear friend, you must, must live again, in spite of the past, and love again. That is man's task on earth, to live and to love. And once he does that, he becomes a part of that Vast, harmonious whole. Look, look up there. That infinity of sky. Look. Can you look at it and think that our lives will end here on Earth? No. No. You and I are links in a vast invisible chain, the beginnings of which are hidden somewhere in that lofty sky. I saw that sky at Austerlitz. I haven't seen it since, until now. Now, if only you were right, my friend, in the things you say. I am. I am. I believe it. Well, perhaps.
What's the matter? Uh, one of the horses appears to have gone lame, Your Excellency. I'll just see what it is. What a beautiful spring day, Your Excellency. Hmm? How mild it is. Everything's coming out too early. Amazing how they respond to a bit of warmth. <laughs> Only that old oak wants to sleep on. Stubborn things, oak trees. Never want to wake up. Never want to face the summer again. Look at him. <laughs> Same old tale, he says. Spring and love and happiness. Don't believe in it. It's all stuff and nonsense. Leave me alone. I've seen it all before. Must have picked up a stone somewhere, Your Excellency. It'll be all right till we get to Count Rostov's. Yes, the oak is right. A thousand times right. Spring is a delusion. The young are deceived by it, but not us. Our life is finished, finished. Just leave me alone and let me live it out. Yes, the oak is right. Count Rostov, Prince Volkonsky to see you. Ah, oh, Prince, this is a pleasure, an honour. How wonderful of you to come all the way out to Atradny to see us. I thought it time I introduced myself. Of course, of course, it should have happened sooner. Uh, Prokofi, tell the Countess we have a visitor. Well, isn't it wonderful weather? Have you come all the way from Bald Hills today? No, no, I've been visiting the Riazan estates. Ah, the Riazan estates, yes. Mm -hmm. They're in your area. Yes, of course, aren't they? They belong to my son now. Oh, I see. And you're here um, in connection with the transfer. Precisely. My father transferred them to my son, making me the trustee. Since you're the local marshal of the nobility. Oh, you must come to see me. Well, that's fortunate. Business brings us together where nothing else did. But uh, that means I must send to Moscow for the papers. And that can't be done till tomorrow. No, oh, but surely. Not possible. But we'll make a virtue of necessity and you'll stay the night. Wonderful. No, no, you seem to have a lot of guests already. Uh... Oh, there's always room. Ah, my dear, uh, see who's here. Prince Volkonsky. He was visiting the Riazan estate. Countess. And he came to see us. Isn't that wonderful? Well, you are well known to us, Prince, through so many acquaintances. Seems extraordinary that we've never met before. And uh, this is my wife's cousin, Princess Drubetskaya, our oh, dear friend. Drubetskaya, are you related to Boris Drubetskoy? He's my son. Ah. He's told me all about you and how kind you were to him in the early days of his career. Oh, as I remember, I did very little. I'm sure he'll go far of his own accord. Oh, yes. Boris is very ambitious. Oh, Prince Volkonsky was a great help. Natalie, I told you, yeah. remember? Yeah. He used to mention you so often in his letters. <laughs> We have some young friends staying with us. There's my eldest, Vera. Vera, my dear, come and meet Prince Volkonsky. And this is my daughter, Vera. Countess. How do you do? Captain Berg. We've met before, I think. Really? 
I don't... Uh... Three years ago, I was sharing quarters with Boris Drubetsko at Olmutz, just before Austerlitz. Ah, yes. I remember. The Count's son, Nikolai, called in to see Boris. You remember the Count, I told you. Oh, yes. It was a long time ago now. Three years already. Oh, long time flies. So you've met my son too, then, Prince? So it would seem. Oh, and he's been decorated, you know. He's a real soldier now. His career and everything. Vera, call Natasha. I want her to meet Prince Bolkonsky. Of course. Uh, Boris, too, has made it his career, Prince. Uh, you know he was in Tilsit at the meeting of the two emperors. Uh -huh. He was attached to the sovereign staff. Really? Well, he was so efficient, the sovereign was forced to take notice of him. Oh, I heard it, of course, not from Boris, but from Prince Dolgorukov. Come and meet Principal Kolsky. This is my younger daughter, Natasha. Hello, I nearly knocked you over. Yes. <laughs> oh. I was trying to scare the others. They've been so bored all day, I thought it would liven them up. <laughs> oh, Natasha. Well, you suddenly scared me. No, I didn't. I saw your face as I passed. It had that, good God, what does she think she's doing expression on it. <laughs> I didn't realize I was so easily raised. <laughs> <laughs> Are you staying? It uh, seems I must. I, uh... I have to wait for some papers from Moscow. Ilya, darling, why are we all standing up like this? No, oh, forgive me. Uh, Prince, do sit down. Thank you. I'll uh, order some refreshments. Of course. Of course. Come on, Natasha, we're waiting. Oh, excuse me, my friends. I'd better join you. Did you never return to the army, Prince? No. What a pity. We heard so much about Kutusov's aid. Oh, I did very little, I'm afraid. Oh, come, Prince. Everyone heard of your run down the hill with the banner. It's still mentioned even today when people talk of Austerlitz. Well, one does many foolish things in the heat of battle. Well, that's just what my Nikolai says. Do you know, Anna, he confessed to me that his memories of most of the battles are quite hazy. Well, it's well known, Countess, that when the mind is in a high state of excitement, it selects only one or two important things to be aware of. Even bodily sensations are diminished. For example, at the end of a battle, many soldiers find themselves wounded and can't remember when it happened. They are utterly astounded to find blood on them. Even quite serious wounds that only now are troubling. Isn't that so, Prince? Prince Volkonsky? Stay here all night. You should see the stars. There are millions of them. Millions. Oh, I feel as if I could just fly off right out into the night. Take care, you fly off. Oh, Sonia, you spoil everything for me. Well, I must. I must. And for her, I might just as well not exist. I wonder... I wonder if... that oak was really right. In a few weeks, he'll be spreading his leaves again, even he. He'll join the rest of them. Spring, love and happiness, the same old tale. But it is a beautiful tale. No. Life is not over at 31. 
It's not enough to know what I have in me. Everyone else must know it too. Pierre, that young girl who wanted to fly away. All of them must learn to know me. So that my life is not lived for myself alone. But may be reflected in them all. That they and I may live in harmony together. Yes. Yes, we should uh, talk about that. Yes. You don't mind my mentioning it? No, no, certainly. After all, um, you have a right to know. It should be discussed. I think so. After all, if I were to allow myself to marry without knowing how much I had to depend on to maintain my wife, well, <laughs> that would be acting very foolishly. Yes, absolutely. No, no, I, I like your being businesslike about it. After all, the wedding will be soon. Yes, amazing. Oh, time goes so quickly. And Vera will want to know. Naturally, naturally. She and I have budgeted our own income, and I think you'll find we've done rather well with it. The only thing is the dowry. We still aren't sure how much she'll bring with her. Uh, yes, well, now, let me see. Um, of course, I haven't got my steward with me, so... Uh... I'm not entirely sure of the figures. But you must have some thoughts on the subject. Oh, naturally, naturally. Um, let me see now. Uh, it's hard to be precise, but uh, suppose I were to offer you, um, say, a note of hand for um, 80,000 rubles? How would that be? Well, that, that's generous, but uh, I have so many expenses. I shall need 20,000 in cash. If you could manage that, I'll take a note of hand for the balance of 60. Yes, yes, to be sure. Only you must allow me to give you the uh, 20,000 and a note of hand for 80,000. That's more than generous. Oh, there, then. That's settled. Thank you, Papa. Now I think Vera is waiting for me. Oh, yes, yes, dear chap. You go on. Well, nothing, my friend, nothing. We've uh, settled the diary. It had to be done. How are you, my love? What did you agree on? Ooh, 80,000. Well, I'm giving him 20,000 in cash. Don't need it. Is your headache better? In addition or on account? In addition? Oh. We set aside estates for each of the girls when they were born. We've had to sell them. Each year, we have to mortgage more and more. Where does the money go? I don't know. Well, it's not as bad as that. Ilya, you don't know how bad or how good. You leave all the books to the steward. Well, he's a clever fellow. It worries me. I wish Nikolai would leave the army and come home. He could look after things. My pet, there's no need to worry, believe me. We keep so many people here. The place looks like a hotel. Sometimes I come in, I wonder if I'm in the right house. Do you know what I thought of doing? What? I thought of going to Petersburg and asking for a government to post. Well, that would at least bring in a salary. Ilya, darling, work? Well, why not? Other people do it. Oh, but Ilya... No, my mind's made up. I'm going to Petersburg. Why don't we all go? We should give the children a last fling before we start the economies. What a good idea. Oh, what a wonderful woman you are. <laughs>
Prince Volkonsky. May I introduce myself? I'm Mikhail Speransky. Of course. I knew you at once. I've been wanting to meet you since I read of your reforms of the government. That's very kind. There's a great deal to do and too few people, right people, to do it. I've read your report on the suggested reforms of the army. I was so impressed. Thank you. Very little seems to have happened to it. Well, these things take time. There's a lot of opposition. I just wanted to say how glad I am that someone of your ability is involving himself in this work. When I left the war, I suffered such a reaction against public work, I became something of a recluse. You were too young for that. Well, you know, Austerlitz was an unforgivable disaster. It needn't have happened. It left me only with a desire to get away from it all. So I spent my time reorganizing my estates. Yes, I heard about it. You're among the first to introduce quick rents and liberate yourselves. How should we generally follow? Oh, I think it will be, given time. There are economic advantages, too, you know, that people are unaware of. It isn't all humanitarianism. Well, I just wanted to say how glad I am to see you back in harness, as they say. We have the air of his majesty, you know. This is a wonderful time we're working. I understand that you're revising the legal code. That is so. The commission has been in existence for 50 years and has done absolutely nothing. Do you have any ideas on this subject? Only in those areas where it touches on the position of the aristocracy. Excellent, excellent. Let's meet and talk about them. Do come and see me. I think we'll be of help to each other. And to Russia, too. Well... At a ball, I must dance. <laughs> your hair. Just a minute, Mavra. We're going to be dreadfully late. No, we're not. I wish you'd have been there at ten o'clock, and it's ten o'clock now. There, that's done. Not there, that's minute. better. That's much better. The hen's done. The hen's oh, done. Oh, well, well, fix it. Don't crouch there, screeching. Where's the needle and cotton? Are ready, you two? Oh, almost ready, Papa. Don't come in yet. There. How does that look? Oh, lovely, Sonia. Oh, you look exquisite, doesn't you, Maggie? Yes, she does. Now, will you please be still? Now, do you want to get to the ball or not? Yes, of course I do, my darling. Only do hurry. Yes, well, it's almost done. Oh, good heavens, I'm so excited. Do you think the Tsar will really be there? Well, of course he will. Said so on the invitation. The Tsar doesn't say he's going to a ball and then not go. Oh, Natasha, do you think anyone will ask us to dance? Of course they will. I couldn't bear it if we were left standing all evening. There'll be so many beautiful women there. But we'll be the best, won't we, Madara? <laughs> what a question. <laughs> of course you will. Oh, Olga, haven't you finished yet? yet? Please keep standing. Oh, there, your hair's down. Now, where's the collar? It's in the drawer. Going in. Oh, just a minute, Papa. Oh, Mavra, do hurry. I am hurrying. It's you that's been dawdling all evening. If only Nikolai were here, he'd dance with us. Oh, you'll have plenty to dance with you. Don't worry. Still, still, it would be nice to go in with a young man, especially in uniform. Yes, but Nikolai, he's such a terrible dancer. He's not. Oh, he is. He's so stiff. Now, if that Denisov were here, Sonia, do you remember him? What a good dancer he was. The mazurka, that's all he could do. But how he could dance <laughs> There. It. Now, let me see. It's beautiful. <laughs> Oh, 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 Papa, how nice you look. You look wonderful. Just wonderful. <laughs> Sonia, my little Sonia, doesn't she look lovely? Yeah. How's that? It's lovely, Olga. Is it straight? Well, stand straight, my darling. Let me see. How can I tell with you bending over backwards? No, it's not straight. Can't you sew a straight hem? How can I sew it straight? She keeps walking all over the house. Oh, it won't notice. It's your first ball. Are you mad? Oh, honestly, Natasha. Turn round. Let me see. You see, the hem isn't straight. I can't see anything. Oh, it's as plain as the nose on your face. Oh, Marbra, it's quarter past ten. It's a ball, not a competition for straight hems. You need a telescope to see that. 
Are you ready? Uh, oh, Mama, you look lovely. You look younger than both oh, of you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Ilya, don't no. be beautiful. <sighs> Well, are we ready? Ready! The Rostovs are coming. Make way! <laughs> oh, I think they're looking at you. We must hurry. Oh, Zami, you'll be there already. In which case, we'll have to wait Here in connection with the reforms for the army. You're back in the world then? Yes. And you, I saw you come in with your wife. Yes. It's not all over then, as you thought. Well, you know, Andre, it was for her sake she wanted to come back. You'll never be the same again. Your father, how's he? Oh, he looks a lot older. You should come and visit us. He'll enjoy arguing with you. I will. Your sister, how's she? She's surrounded by godfolk. Like you, she takes solace in religion. May I present my daughter, Natasha? Charming. And my niece, Sonia. Charming. Compared to you, they look pale and white.
Boris dancing with that girl again. Do you think he hasn't noticed this? No, of course not. He'd have come over. Perhaps he feels we're not as important in Petersburg as we are in Moscow. My dear, what a thing to say. Aren't you dancing? No. Would you do me a favor? What is it? Well, I've just seen a young friend of mine here. I think it's her debut, and she's not dancing, and she looks very unhappy. Would you ask her for the next dance? Where is she? She's over there. The Rostov girl? Yes, you know her? I called on her father to discuss some business. Would you ask her for the next dance? Of course. Prince Polkowski, how very kind. Do you remember my wife? Of course, Countess, my daughter Natasha, my niece Sonia. I came over to ask your daughter if she'd do me the honor of dancing with me. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I would. Certainly looking at you. When did you arrive? Ages ago. I thought no one was ever going to ask me to dance. You must have been hiding somewhere. I would certainly have asked you earlier. I was right in the I saw you. that no one would ask them to dance. <laughs> They've never stopped. Don't you think Bolkonski is monopolizing her a little? <laughs> What's the matter with that? I should like to see the young men get a chance. On that end, how are you? Boris! I was beginning to think you'd never notice us. Well, I only just saw you. I didn't even know you. You just put a cat on. Boris, my boy. Oh, how strange you look. You're so important. You don't come to see us anymore, Boris. Well, I don't have the opportunity, Aunt. The army's kept me away from Moscow for these three years. Is that Natasha with Bolkonsky? You didn't recognize her, eh? <laughs> She's so grown up. So embarrassing. No, no, it is charming. I kept asking your cousin to come and look at the moon with you. <laughs> I listened to you for quite a while. I shall be much more careful next time. No, it isn't in your nature to be careful. Boris. Well, Prince, now that we're all here in Petersburg, I do hope you'll come over and see us. Thank you. I hope we may dance again later. What do you think of your little playmate? 
because she's grown so pretty. <laughs> I should hope so. I was such an ugly duckling. Oh. Since you were nothing of the kind. <gasps> yes, son? Boris. I can't get over how we've all changed. Only outwardly, I hope. I like to think you're the same sweet children you always were. Well, I must take my little chicks in the supper. Boris, will you come with us? No, excuse me, Uncle, but I promised to take Julie Karagine. Yes. Remember us to Julie. Yes, I will. We were very sorry to hear about her brother's death. Seems so sad. One can only inherit money as a result of death. Well, we'll see you later, then. The night's still young. Come, come. Prince, I'll tell my master you're all right. No, on second thoughts, don't bother. I will, uh, I'll just leave my car. Good morning. Good morning. I was just passing, I thought I'd call. Nobody's up. I'm embarrassed. I had no idea it was so early. They're all asleep. Of course. It was thoughtless of me. You must have got home very late. It was almost five o'clock. <laughs> How did you manage to rise so early? Oh, I couldn't sleep. I was so excited. Wasn't it wonderful? The ball? Yes, it was very pleasant. Oh, I thought it was wonderful. But then you've been to so many, I suppose. Quite a few. But I thought that was one of the more enjoyable ones. Oh, I'm so glad. Because I thought it was wonderful. Wouldn't you like to sit down? I think I should go. Oh, they'll have told my father you're here by now. And then away they ought to be up. It's such a beautiful morning. Did you come to see my father about something? To be frank, I have no excuse except I enjoyed the company of your family last night. I... Oh. Um, how long will you be in Petersburg? A few weeks. Ah. Well, then it'll give me the opportunity to... Do you know you're quite enchanting? What a lovely thing to say. It wasn't right, I'm sorry. No, please don't spoil it. I won't hold you to it, even if you change your mind tomorrow. Ah, Prince. I'm sorry we were late. No, please don't apologize. I'm embarrassed already. I was saying to your daughter, I had no idea it was so early. No, well, it's us who are late, so we're not the earliest risers after last night. <laughs> uh, do sit down. I've ordered some breakfast. No, no, please. I won't stop. I'm on my way to a meeting with the Minister of War. Oh, but surely, won't you... No, uh... please. Give my regards to your wife. Goodbye. I'll... Uh... I'll call again, if I What a strange chap. What on earth do you call for? Well, I don't tell your mother. Papa? He said I was enchanting. So you are, my dear, so you are. Everyone says so. Is it this effect she has on me? I could weep. For what? For Lisa? For past love? For lost illusions? I don't know. When I look at her, she makes me feel as if my life is not yet over. Pierre was right. In order to be happy, one must believe in the possibility of happiness. Ah, that's it. She makes me believe. She makes me believe in the possibility of happiness. Yes, that's it. 
That's why I could weep. Weep. Natasha, I've never heard you sing it so well. Bravo, my dear, bravo. Well, Prince, wasn't that lovely? I have kept you all so late. Oh, please don't apologize. It's been a pleasure. Hey, my love? Oh, the Prince knows he is welcome at any time. Good night. And thank you for more than just the song. Beautiful though it was. You've all been very kind. No, please, don't get up. I know my way out well enough by now. Well? Oh, Mama, please don't ask me questions. Not now. Is he? No, I was just going over the transactions of our last lodge meeting. I have guests. No, Helen has guests. She has become a brilliant hostess, haven't you heard? I'm not keeping you. No. I left them an hour ago. They look on me as some kind of eccentric lodger she had to take with the house. I let them. She has become une femme charmante, as spiritual as she is beautiful. People sit at her feet and listen to the wise and witty sayings that drop from her lips. I never cease to be amazed at the stupidity of man. You're not happy, my friend. <laughs> Who is happy? I tell you, Andre, life is a puzzle. I find great comfort now in Freemasonry, but something is missing. Here is you I have to thank for reminding me of the possibility of being happy. Oh, did I do that? Yes, about a year ago. You came to see me at Bogucharvo, full of your new Freemasonry. You said I wasn't alive that I must learn to live again, and love again. Yes, I remember. I am in love, my friend. Yes, I think I know with whom. With Natasha Rostova, is it not? I would never have believed it. Well, of course, who else could it be? Of course, who else? I never thought this intensity was in my range of feeling. I, I loved Lisa, but I'm in torment and agony, and I wouldn't exchange it for anything in the world. What's the matter? Nothing. Forgive me, I had to talk to someone, and here I am prattling on about how happy I am while you, your own life is... Yes, yes. I envy you the feelings that you have inside you at this moment. I'm glad for you, too. You believe that? She's the treasure, that girl, the rare spirit. She is life. She's all life. You can hear it in her voice, you can see it in the way she walks and dances. That boundless zest for living, the... Spring bubbling up from the earth, virgin, clear and unclouded, the life force, the vital spirit it dims in so many of us. You've known her a long time. Yes, a long time. You think I should marry her? Yes, yes. I'm too old for her. Just marry her. There'll be no happier man on earth, of that I'm sure. Huh? But what of her? She loves you, I know. Oh, don't talk rubbish. She loves you, I know it. If only you were right. I am right. Ask her. You'll see. <laughs> oh! So now you want to talk at this hour? Yes. Couldn't it wait until morning? No. Come and lie down. Here. Well, what do you think? About what? Oh, you know about what? About him. Prince Andre? Yes. I don't know. I don't know what to think. What did he talk to you about tonight? I can't remember. Everything he says to me goes out of my head the minute he said it. No, he's not the only one you don't listen to. Oh, <laughs> honestly, Mama, I'm in a daze when he speaks to me. Oh, wait. He asked me where we were going to spend the summer, mm. and he asked me about Boris. Boris? Vera told him we were sweethearts when uh, we were children. She was. But he only laughed. And anyway, he's so different from Boris. Boris is 
narrow like the dining room clock. <laughs> what nonsense. Oh, he is. <laughs> Can't you see? Narrow and pale grey. <laughs> now, Bazuhov is mm. blue. Dark blue and red and square. <laughs> oh, stop it. Oh, stop giggling, Mama. I'm serious. <laughs> you flirt with him, too. No, I don't. Mm. Not since I found out he was a Freemason. <laughs> but Prince Andre, he's white and silver. And he shines in the sun. Mm. Like a knight. Well... Why not? Mm. I don't know. Do you think he's in love? Yes. Yes, I do. Oh, I knew you'd say that. <laughs> I think so, too. It's as if it all had to happen. His coming to Petersburg while we were here, our meeting at the ball, everything. It just had to happen. Mm. 